Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to this next episode of In the Dirt with us, Soto. We got a special guest with us today, Richard Lupo, who is the service director at Apple Tree Honda in Acura, which is in North Carolina. In fact, it's got three rooftops. Not only is it Honda and Acura, but they've also got their pre-owned building, which is pretty cool. So Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Jordan. It's been a, a, a great getting to know you, and I'm happy to be here and uh, be a part of this today. So thank you. No, thank you. And it's been a huge pleasure getting to know you and really what drives you and what you're passionate about. And what's really cool is when you have a team that is really moving in the same direction. And it, you found a really positive way to build into your team members within your service department and kind of keep things moving in the same direction. And that's 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 cool and that's exciting. And you've been featured in a lot of places. So huge props to you guys. Um, you know, I wish I could take credit for uh, even a, a, a portion of it, but uh, Apple Tree has a, a great legacy, uh, 50 years in business as a Honda dealer. That's true. One of the very few Honda dealers that reaches the 50 mark now. Uh, they're they're a, a great commodity on the market, so they get bought and sold quite often, things like that. So, But it's a family-owned dealership uh, here in the uh, Western North Carolina uh, region. Asheville is the local metro market. And uh, so I've been in here for the last couple of years, and, and you know, it's uh, – I, I inherited a lot of legacy uh, and that's true caretaking. Uh, you know, there's, there's part of it that's caretaking to the legacy here. Uh, and then of course you have to never continue. You never uh, stop innovating and, and pushing forward to, to make sure the business stays relevant uh, to the changes in the market, uh, the consumer, the product, everything, you know, you've got to, you've got to be nimble. No matter if you've been in business five minutes or fifty years, you have to stay nimble and yeah, that's right. Stay with uh, stay with the changes, you know, across the board. Whether it's the consumer, the manufacturer, you know, whether it's a EVs or oops, sorry about that. That's okay. Silence that. I apologize. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, and so, uh, whether it's EVs or uh, yeah. you know, or the hydrogen stuff that's making a comeback right now. Um, you know, all that stuff, the drivetrains, the, the, the financing, the leasing, I mean, we've been, you know, 30 years into this. If you don't stay up with what the consumer is doing, um, your competition will pass you by. So no time to rest on the laurels of 50 years. We have to continue to drive forward, keep everything relevant so that we can That's true. provide the services uh, that the people here in, in our community have come to expect from Apple Tree. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think there's a lot of cool things that you said, like, not only the fact that you guys are doing things well and trying to stay in touch with what's going on and stay ahead of what consumers need and want, but also the fact that you inherited something that was already great and you're able to take it to the next level. So something you guys did in the last couple of weeks is you expanded and opened up a new quick lube uh, service lane. So tell us a little bit about that. How's it going? Uh, it, we're actually ahead of schedule. Um, That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it is great. Uh, you know, you plan for the, you plan for the worst and hope for the best. And, uh, you know, uh, it's a shared service center, so it's pretty unique sure. in that uh, uh, we were very early adapters. Apple Tree was very early adapters to Acura, and so we were able to build the facilities next to each other. So they, we don't share a parking lot anymore, but we uh, because the Honda facility was re, uh, a new Honda facility was built uh, about eight years ago. We opened it, but um, most. Acura franchises are located in a different part of town by design. That's right. In the Honda store. So we're in a, uh, in a unique situation where our Honda and our Acura stores are very close to each other. And so we've opened up a shared service center uh, that we, we do a lot, we do a lot of stuff out of it, uh, but we also have moved the majority of our quick service operations to that building. And so we do the quick service from the Acura and the Honda at that shared facility, consolidates the operations, uh, streamlines it for our parts, our you know our our, our technicians, our parts, our advisor. It's all in one spot. You know they're they're getting washed, they're getting vac, they're doing all that stuff in one spot now instead of having two separate places uh, doing it. So it's 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 helped a bunch, and um, yeah, it has the you know. The, the proverbial wheels haven't fallen off on of it. It's, <laughs> sure. it's, it's, uh, uh, it's been uh, better than we've expected up to the point where, where we are right now. So, yeah, that's great. Now I got to ask you, what, 
what first brought you to the automotive industry? <laughs> um, well, you know, we talked offline a little bit about it, Yeah, that's right. I was, uh, was born, literally born into the business. My father. I love that. <laughs> my father owned a repair shop when I was born. And so, um, you know, if you, you dig somewhere in some scrapbooks uh, in my mom's house, you'll probably find some, uh, uh, pictures of me about, you know, crawling around a garage and diapers, you know, so yeah. it's, really, it's, it's my whole, uh, it's my whole life, you know, yeah. certainly, uh, the, what we've done and, uh, 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 branched out from there. And, uh, my dad's repair shop was, uh, just a means to an end. He, uh, yeah, really horrible, uh, racing habit. So sure. Fixing cars during the week is what paid for the racing on the weekends. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, it fed his addiction. <laughs> yeah, uh, fixed a lot of cars growing up, and uh, you know worked on a lot of race cars, and uh, um, it's been a, it's been a great great experience. And uh, whether it's been the racing community or the automotive community in general, just a fantastic business to to live and work and grow and. And mature and, and spend you know the, the, my entire life in yeah just like you said the community as a whole whether it's automotive or in racing there's there's just something cool about it because there's people like yourself who are so open to helping other people improve not even ones that are at your store but yeah. other operators across the country and other service directors so that is so cool that we're able to grow together just through maybe we're trying to get around a corner um or the fact that you've been through things that other people haven't, and you can help guide them through that. So I think it's just so cool when you have a community like that uh, where we can all grow together. And, like, huge props to you for being a, par a huge part of that, Richard. Thank you. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, this business, uh, um, is, it is community. Um, yeah. There's a brother, it, the, the, the stress, the workload, all that stuff, it doesn't, there's a commonality that you can only understand if you if you do it, you know, first responders are very similar. Uh, you put a bunch of race car drivers together and they know what it's like to, you know, strap into a race car. Uh, service managers strap into their desks and go for yeah, a ride. that's right. <laughs> service so, advisors, they strap to their phone, right? <laughs> yeah, so there's a shared experience, a commonality, brotherhood that exists there. And, and so uh, in being in this business my entire life, it is uh, it has done so well for me. Uh, that I can't help but just want to give back and, and help others succeed. Um, you know, there were, when I came into this business early on, there were there were a lot of uh, it, it, it was thought of a lot different. And you know, usually there were a lot of people that were unwilling to train anyone because they wanted they didn't want anybody to replace them. You That's know, right. A lot of closed mindedness like that. But there's so much opportunity within this business, and there's so much room for growth. And just and to, to really, really change the trajectory of somebody's life man i again yeah, i'm living proof of that yeah and i think that's what's so cool about this industry is that we have people that are new to automotive like whether they're in service whether they're in parts whether they're at the body shop and what we can do is help provide a stability to learn and then also ways that we can help them improve, especially when you got a great team like you guys do. So that is, it's so cool to see that. And you've seen, um, you know, so, people say it only happens on the sales side, but that's not true. It happens on, on fixed all the time where someone comes in and they fall in love with automotive and they fall in love with what they're doing and they learn to grow and they learn um, and they continue to educate themselves for whatever that next step is. And they just, they fall in love with this decade long uh, career that they've built. It's, it's really cool to see that. It, it is. Um, it is, uh, it, the sales side, um, you know, being a fixed guy, it's, it's hard sometimes for me to relate that somebody woke up and said, Hey, I want to sell cards. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but then on the flip side, you know, yeah, I want to go and get wake up and go fix a car. So yeah, but, you know, different thing, different strokes for different folks, I guess. And so, that's right. <laughs> uh, you know, early on, my father taught me, you know, how to do how to take something that was broken fixed, and there was a lot of magic in that when you could take something that was you know broken and not worth anything and fix it and make it work again. And that 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 just hooked me. You know, the way it hooked my father. You know. Uh, and so it, it, from there it progressed on and, and, you know, became a very proficient technician, uh, retired from that. And, be, and I took that same, uh, attitude where I wanted to be the best technician that I could be. And I made myself a student of being a, a fixed manager and 
So I like to think of myself uh, at this point with the experience as uh, the same as a master technician. I like to think that we've put in the time, the training, and 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 paid the dues to be able to be considered, you know, a competent at, at, at this part of the job now as well. Exactly. So when you look at how you lead your team, whether it's your service advisors or your technicians, what are some things that you guys do really well there at Apple Tree? For me, it's all about our our employees. I mean, the team. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> it, well, it you know, if you don't have, um, you know, if if Bill Belichick doesn't have Tom Brady, um, there's not a lot of Super Bowls being won, right? Sure, that's right. <laughs> uh, you can be the best coach, but if you don't have the, the, the players, there's just, you know, you don't have the chance to win. And, and I like to win. Uh, so we make sure that we have talented people and then we, we get out of their way. You know, we spend our time removing roadblocks from them, bottlenecks in the process, uh, freeing them up and treating them with the respect that they deserve for the work that they do, supporting them, giving them the stability, uh, that just get, setting an environment up where they can really succeed, uh, both professionally, financially, uh, and just support them in that. And if you, if you support your people, um, give them the tools that they need to be successful, train them, um, y- you will get a winning team and that's 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 what my job is is at this point i don't fix car broken cars anymore and you know we've got our service managers at our acura and our our honda stores and they're out there you know shaking hands gripping and grinning and you know answering phones and doing all that kind of stuff and i get to you know stand back at maybe not ten thousand feet but maybe at least a couple thousand feet and uh (laughs) yeah where the roadblocks are remove those and and uh you know just help really really uh enforce that the managers take care of the people that take care of them and that's our advisors our technicians our support staff you know and if car wash guys are not doing their jobs we're going to have upset customers even if the tires and brakes and batteries went on perfectly yeah Uh, that's right support every single job and everybody's important and if you have to give the same respect and, and support to the guys that are and, and gals that are washing cars and, and parking cars that you do to the front line and the people answering phones and driving shuttles. And it's a full, full effort. Yeah, it is. And just like you said, from beginning to end, like every single step in that process matters. And, you know, like you said, too, that the tires could go on right, the brakes could go on right. But then all of a sudden, if you screw something up during the car wash side of it, once you're working on the final delivery point, like that's that's a meaningful detail to that person. Um, or even if there's like there's one small footprint inside the car, it's those tiny details that make a difference. And and I mean, it's 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 stuff like that that I think not necessarily stands out to people like in a negative way, but also on the positive side, because if you can successfully deliver an exceptional experience every single time that you talk to a customer or touch a customer through that process. I think that's a win and that's how you get great retention. You get great staff. And it's clear, Richard, that you've got staff that really understands those details. And it's, it's just really cool and really inspiring to see that. What would you say was the hardest part to get to that point? Because, you know, it's it's hard to do everything to a very high, exceptional degree all the time. So what was one of the biggest struggles you guys had and how did you guys overcome it? Um, well, here at Apple Tree, there, um, just making sure that the culture matches uh, the effort. Yeah. Uh, we have great, great, hardworking people. Yeah. And making sure that the the culture and the attitude that management has uh, is is in, is consistent with the hard work and effort that that, that everyone is putting in. Yeah. You cannot be top down. You can't. You, you just can't. Uh, you have to. You have to be supported from the bottom up. And so I would say that that was my biggest thing getting off off the ground here at yeah. during my tenure. Just making sure that that, that the that the uh, culture matched the the uh, effort being put on by uh, by the, the staff that was already in place. So, and probably in my personal journey, my growth, um, you know, I guess early early on in your career, you don't always learn um, without 
you know, beating your head against the wall. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you, you know, when you're younger, you, you, uh, you don't take the lessons quite in as fast and you, you know, you got to figure it out on your own. And so you, you make a bunch of mistakes. And so the biggest challenge was probably learning from the mistakes. Yeah. Uh, taking those to heart. You know, yeah. You, uh, every successful person will tell you, and I, you know, I, mildly successful, but uh, any successful person will tell you that there it is, there's a trail of mistakes and failures that led up to, you know, that led up to the success that they're enjoying at the moment. And um, it's a, uh, fail, a trail of failures that led to the success and yeah. learning and learning and learning um, uh, along the way and, and being able to actually take the failure and turn it into an actionable change in the way I do things. Uh, that's, that's a great one. You know, that's probably the biggest challenge that I had early on in my career was actually, you know, learning that I figured out that I didn't know everything and, uh, <laughs> surprise, right? <laughs> it's, it's, the older you get to realize that you've become very sure of what you do know. And you're very aware of all the things that you, don't. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It has to be able to learn and, and you know, and, and uh, grow. So anyway, that's probably my yeah. personal challenge. My personal journey is, you know, making sure that I'm learning from our, our mistakes. Yeah, for sure. And if you could go back to the age that your son is now and give yourself a piece of advice, would you say that that's the advice you'd give yourself? Hmm. Or would you pick something else? I, well, I give my son a lot of advice. I, I have four boys and two girls. We have a large family. Yeah. And so uh, dad never um, fails to uh, vocalize um, his advice for his children. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a love wins, you know, you have to. That's true. You have to have compassion. You have to have empathy and uh, for your fellow person. And if you have those things, it will lead to growth. It can only lead to growth. Compassion, empathy, understanding leads to growth. And it took me a long, I don't know, a long time. I don't know if everything's relative, but it yeah, took sure. me time to figure out the place for empathy uh, and sympathy, empathy, um, and, and being understanding of your, your fellow, uh, person, whoever that is, if it's, uh, somebody you work for or somebody's working for you or just somebody you meet on the street, people you work with, whatever, uh, friends, you know, the, that, that will grow you, uh, leaps and bounds more than actually learning how to turn a wrench or push a piece of paper across your desk or run a spreadsheet is having that empathy for your fellow human. What a great piece of advice to give, you know, someone of, of that young age, because it's clear, Richard, through the multiple conversations I've had with you, that you're a very empathetic person. And that's probably what has made you so successful to the point where you've grown to leadership positions and to the point where you know it's so important for your staff to care for that customer. And that's why you invest so much in your staff because they really need to invest back into their customer. And that's what leads to retention. That will That's what leads to long-term success. Man, so Richard, I love that. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing this and creating this episode with us. Thanks a ton, Richard. Anytime, Jordan, anytime. You, yeah. What you guys are doing at State of the Union is fantastic. Thank you, I appreciate that. What you guys are doing is just fantastic. I'm, I'm just happy to be a part, a very small part of it for a few minutes today. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you I, so much. I appreciate that, Richard. And thank you so much for making this community great. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for watching this episode of In the Dirt with a Sodu. If you're new to our channel, make sure and mash that like and subscribe button. Also, check out some of these links for our other great podcasts and content.